And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Well, friends, just when you think the world is going nuts, well, <laughs> along comes a lot of evidence to prove your case. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Today we're going to be talking about something that sounds insane. It's it's right off the the our TV screens, off of the uh, news magazines and so forth. But but I wonder, it might well be, and my guest today is going to be talking about this very subject, it could be that the world is being driven insane. Maybe what's going on all around us is a staged drama, a, a ritual of sorts, and maybe there are already certain individuals, certain people, who have already been chosen to play a certain kind of role in this incredible global stage production that the Illuminati is now presenting to the world. Let's just put it that way. Maybe there's some who their, their very lives are being played out in the newspapers, in celebrity magazines, on TV and so forth. They are... They are fashion queens, beauty queens, the pretty people, so to speak. But how pretty can they be when we realize the horror of what seems to be occurring to them? Today, I would like to propose that you and I as friends discuss the subject of the sordid drama of the mind-controlled Beauty queens, the broken lives and deaths of, yes, Anna Nicole Smith, but there's more. There's Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield and Princess Diana and Grace Kelly, and then there are those who are still alive, or are they, maybe only in form, but it seems their souls are already dead. Madonna, Britney Spears, and many others. I, I want to ask the question, are these young women alive and dead? Are they nothing more than Illuminati sex slaves? H has something horrible happened to these young beauty queens? And what is going on all about us? Have, as my guess, because... Uh, I'll tell you, he's a man that uh, I know can uh, give us some answers. You know, you've already seen the news. You've, you've watched CNN and Fox TV and ABC. You know about Anna Nicole Smith. You know, just ad in, infinitum. It, it, it's just sick. I don't even want to hear anymore about Anna Nicole Smith and all those things that are going on about her very perverse, disgusting, and vulgar life. And yet there may be a riddle, a a mystery, an enigma deeper than the news uh, uh, organs can possibly uh, uh, cover it. Freeman is my guest today. You know, he had a TV program. I understand he's put it on hiatus. He's resting a while. I can understand that. You just get exhausted. It, he's resting a while, but he still has his Internet website. And I read a tremendous article on his website and uh, we'll tell you that, uh, I believe it's uh, freemantv.com. Freeman, like freemantv.com. Freeman and I, uh, he was uh, good enough to invite me on his TV program here on Austin Cable Access some months ago. And we did an entire program, I think it's about two hours long, in fact, on my book, Codex Magica. But Freeman, because he is a, a great researcher in that same area, had a number of pictures and slides that really added to the production. And we'll tell you a little later on how to get that. Freeman, welcome to Power of Prophecy. Well, thank you, Tex. It is wonderful to be here with you. You know, a lot of people just believe what they see on the news. Everything they see about Anna Nicole Smith, it's like 
a strange drama being played out, but th they don't realize maybe there's something here to the lives of, of a Marilyn Monroe and a Britney Spears. Tell us, what, what do you think is going on? Because every time you turn around, Christina Aguilara uh, and uh, Britney Spears or uh, Paris Hilton, they, they've done something more outrageous. And then we have Miss USA, Tara Connor. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on, the outrageous behavior, but something seems to be askew. What's, what do you think is going on? There is a deeper and darker truth to this whole story that is uh, conveniently being left out of the picture. Uh, when we start to look at this image and we start to recognize the players in it, we see the interlinking connections between it all. And these are Disney, Freemasonry, and Kabbalism. And these three things will go throughout this entire story that we're about to give. Disney, Freemasonry, and Jewish Kabbalism. Yes. Wow. Okay. As if we start to recognize, and as my, my film... Uh, Corporate logos had shown that this is a worldwide uh, ritual being performed, as we saw in the Y2K ritual. The, just to, to establish that this is a worldwide event, uh, that what we are looking at here is ritualism. And this is the big part that is being missed by most of the public because, well, we're not very uh, well informed on the subject of, of ritual and the occult. But as we look and we see that uh, the, the latest big Grammy winners are all ex mouseketeers and that each of the others, including Madonna and Prince, have also been involved with Walt Disney, uh, Madonna making the movie Evita and uh, also making an appearance in the 007 film, uh, we start to make some connections between this, the military intelligence, and uh, Freemasonry and Kabbalism. Because if you look... Uh, these are high-profile rituals that are being enacted in front of the public without them knowing. Uh, the first being the first Mouseketeer, Justin Timberlake, who did a high-profile ritual at the uh, Super Bowl with uh, Janet Jackson. Now, what we see is uh, what was supposed to, or reported to be a uh, costume slip. But when we know the, the rituals of the god and goddess, we know exactly what these symbols mean. So when Justin Timberlake bared Janet Jackson's breast at the Super Bowl, and it had a sun, a golden sun, on a nipple ring to be displayed to everyone, as they knew that this, this was going to be shown, uh, we're looking at a high ritual, a high-profile ritual of the god and goddess. Because if you know the goddess, our goddess here in America, Colombia, uh, known as Lady Liberty, Lady Justice, you will see that she is often or most likely always displayed with one breast showing. And this is uh, the symbol of the goddess. And then the, the golden sun, this is the symbol of the god. And as we start to recognize that these are Mouseketeers we're all talking about, and that Disney was a, a Freemason from Kansas City who was hired by the FBI to bring about occultism into the minds of children, and as we can watch now, the continuing progression of occultism being introduced into our mindsets to the point that we don't even realize it, uh, you start to get the bigger picture. So now you and I, in the Codex Magica film, we went ahead and discussed uh, Madonna and Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera in their high-profile ritual at the MTV Awards, which no one seemed to catch on. Uh, as Madonna comes out dressed as a uh, a worshipful master in her top hat and then has a, a wedding, a lesbian wedding, with Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears, which are also both ex Mouseketeers. Now, you know, you have a picture of that in your article. Yes. Uh, on uh, FreemanTV.com. And as you just stated... And what struck me here again, I, I just I just marvel at the audacity, and I'm sure you do too, Freeman, of, of these occultists to bring this uh, to the world stage. But as you mentioned, she had on a top hat, Madonna now. She was in the middle, and Brittany was on one side of her, uh, and Christina Aguilara on the other side. And uh, 
Madonna was wearing black. And it was sort of a sexy type of male, uh, you know, mannish a- uh, outfit. But she was wearing a top hat. Uh, and at first you think it's, oh, it's, you know, one of these gentlemen's prefer blondes type of thing. You know, the top hat, the, the way you used to wear it back in the, what, the 20s, the 30s. But in fact, the worshipful master of every Masonic lodge and their ceremonies and rituals, that's what he wears, isn't it? Absolutely. And then the, the two girls on either side of this black dressed, uh, mannequin, uh, so to speak, uh, Madonna, uh, which the very word means goddess, but both of them were dressed in very sexy, skimpy outfits, but uh, they were both dressed in white. But one of them was a blonde, one was a brunette. Yes. So there's all kind of manifestations here. And uh, as you mentioned, she in turn kissed passionately, gave a lesbian a smooch or kiss to each one of these women beside her in turn. The San Francisco Chronicle described it as Madonna dressed like a dominatrix bridegroom, French kissing both Aguilera and Spears like a she-dog marking her territory. <laughs> that's, 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 that is mind-boggling. Yes. And then this other thing you mentioned, Justin Timberlake. You know, I recall that when I saw the pictures later, the so-called, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the the malfunction of the wardrobe, where the, uh, the the leather piece came loose, and there was her breast; it just flopped out. And then you mentioned she had a a nipple ring with an image of the golden sun, the sun god, actually. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is just so uh, shocking, and of course, this year. The Super Bowl people, and remember, this is the most single watched event in any given year, right? The Super Bowl. Absolutely. And this is the number one premier event uh, in the whole world, really, but especially in America. But now this year we had Prince, the Black Prince, and he had this guitar, and it was shaped in a certain form like a musical instrument, like a trumpet. But when he was up... Tell people about that. When he got up behind the um, the curtain, so to speak, they had put up this billowing uh, white curtain with the lights the way they had. You could only see a shadow, but absolutely was the form of there he was. Well, the guitar was a phallus. It was a phallus. It was a man's, you know, or a sex organ, and it was like play on this. Yeah. I mean, as sick as that sounds. You know, here's here's a musical instrument, symbolically. Here, play on this. And it was just, and, and yet nobody seemed to complain about that. Yes, no one seems to notice these things. That- yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I know, I read a few uh, sports page uh, uh, editors who said it was a sickening uh, display. But uh, everybody that I talked to said, wasn't it wonderful? He did a great job. Oh, he was, He even Christians told me, oh, that was superb. What a performance Prince put on. I, I just flabbergasted at the lack of discernment. Now, let's go back to Disney. You mentioned that Christina Aguilera, uh, Britney Spears, was a member of the Mouseketeers. And Justin Timberlake. And, just, and Justin Timberlake. Uh, now, you know, uh, Disney, and you, you've talked a lot about him in your article here. He was a high-level Freemason, it wasn't he? So we have the Freemason element. Absolutely. And we we'll uh, continually come back to the Freemasons. And he was, uh, as I understand it, uh, I remember reading at one time, researching him, and I know you know this fact too, he established a, a very private and exclusive club mm. for Freemasons at Disneyland in California called Club 33. Yes. And I tell you, it's it's so disturbing to see that the Congress has put, or the House has put forth the, the House Resolution uh, 33 uh, to establish Freemason Day on St. John's Day. You're kidding. No. Oh. The 33, the highest degree ritual, uh, and it's House Resolution 33, huh? Yes. 
that. On St. John's Day. And of course, their John is really, uh, Jonas or John who comes up out of the sea. The beast that rises up out of the sea. That's the great God they worship. They call it St. John's Day. People think it's John the Baptist, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really the beast that comes up out of the sea, Revelation 13, 1. But that's, that's another story. Now back to this, uh, this, uh, Britney Spears thing. Uh, what do you think is going on with this, uh, this girl? Well, let's consider this, uh, just to establish that my family is, uh, my father was a worshipful master in the Freemasons and my mother was an Eastern star. Uh, my father had to leave the order in order to marry my mom because my mother was married to a separate worshipful master prior to that and you're not allowed to marry another worshipful master's wife even if they're divorced. Hmm. Uh, I bring this up because as Madonna made this ritual uh, passing of the torch to Christina and Brittany, she then removed the name Madonna from herself and has now taken on the name Esther. Ah. Well, Brittany Spears walked into Esther's hair salon and asked Esther to shave her head. Okay, now hold on just a minute. Uh, here again, Esther, the the... And by the way, that very name, and you have written about it, means the star goddess. Yes. Esther, Ishtar, Ashtar, was the great star, the goddess of Babylon, whose number symbolically, by the way, she was called the triple goddess 666 in Babylonian numerology. So we go back to Esther of the Bible, but of course there's some interesting stuff there. Uh, Christians believe Esther was a great lady, of course, but, but actually she was a, a prostitute uh, who prostituted herself uh, in her great uh, vain ambition to become queen. So now we have Madonna who says she wants to be like a Jewish Esther. Yes. And what a coincidence. Now, some people would say, well, now, Freeman, now you're you're grasping at straws. Okay, so so Brittany chose a... Esther's Beauty Shop. That was probably just an accident. Well, this is filled with accidents like that. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. A lot of coincidences here. And, and what we're looking at is something that is so much larger than our third dimensional reality. We are dealing with dark forces here that is above and beyond just your, your normal cause and effect. Now, uh, now, these girls, if they're mind control slaves... Maybe using, you know, that you mentioned the trauma-based mind control techniques of the CIA and their monarch uh, butterfly programs and so forth. W would this was would this then answer the question as why Brittany said some very strange things? Well, uh, let's just say that another striking coincidence in this whole event is that Brittany's first tattoo was of a butterfly with a vine which this is symbolic of the genealogy of the monarch program. A butterfly and then the vine. Just as Jesus talked about the vine, then they would be the vine. And, and the butterfly is, I see, subservient to the or needs the vine, so to speak. And Brittany went on to, uh, uh, to get the uh, fifth name of the Hebrew God, uh, Kabbalistic 72 names of God. She has the Hebrew name of God tattooed onto the back of her head, back of her neck. Now, this is one thing I wanted to ask you. Did you notice, and I'm, I'm sure you did, of all people, Freeman, but there she was in Esther's beauty shop in Hollywood, I suppose, L.A. there somewhere, and you mentioned she had this Kabbalistic name of God tattooed on her neck. I saw that tattoo. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't tell from the, uh, the clips on TV news. And then she took off her hair, of course, but then she had hanging around her neck a Jewish star of David, a six-pointed star, yes. a hexagram, but it was hanging on the back of her neck rather than on the front. Right. Wow. Now, it's, it's interesting to note that when she sat down in that chair and started to shave her own head because Esther had refused to do it, uh, when asked why she had done this, she says, I don't want them touching anymore. Them touching me anymore. I don't want them touching. And they've also been reports that say that she said, I don't want them plugging things into me anymore. 
Yeah, I'm tired of everybody touching me, and I'm fed up of people plugging things into me. Now, if we look into trauma-based mind control, we do see that this starts at a very young age, that the parents are, are typically involved in selling their children off uh, Jean Benet would be another classic example of, of how this is. And we will continually find uh, trauma and abuse in the, in the early stages of these children's lives. And this is true of Anna Nicole. This is true of Prince. I bet we can find it true of Madonna if we look. Um, we, we are seeing children that are being indoctrinated into orders being sold off by their parents. Now, it's interesting, right before Brittany went into uh, Esther's hair salon, she had made a 24-hour visit to the rehabilitation center known as Eric Clapton's Crossroads Center. Mm -hmm. As you know, the Crossroads is famous because of Robert Johnson's deal with the devil that he made there, and this is what Eric Clapton is referring to. Well, of course, Crossroads, you know, that's very, that's a, you know, the X uh, sign... Yeah, you know, that's right. That's true. And, of course, the, the witches always talk a lot about uh, the crossroads. It, it, and it's a symbol of Hecate, the witch, if I can remember. Okay, so... Well, the story runs that Robert Johnson couldn't play a lick on the guitar. He went down to the crossroads. He met with the devil. He admits to all of this. All of his family and friends admit to all this. And when he returned after his meeting, he was a rock star. He spawned rock and roll. He started the whole movement with this one meeting at the crossroads. Now, another striking coincidence in this whole thing is uh, there is the new group running around. You had mentioned uh, Paris Hilton. Uh, Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, and Britney Spears have now been known as the anti-panty party. They are running around without any underwear and showing themselves to paparazzi. Well, if you are aware of the Wonderland Club, which was a pedophile porn ring on the Internet, uh, which spanned numerous countries, I believe it was 13 countries, over 200 people involved, uh, 1,250 children sold into this slavery by their parents. Uh, this came out in 1998, but it wasn't very big news in America. And they were known as the Wonderland Club because of the affiliation with uh, the known pedophile uh, Lewis Carroll, writing Alice in Wonderland. Uh, well, Lindsay Lohan, who is, is also a Disney star and also friends with Britney running around without any underwear, has just checked into the Wonderland Clinic. Hmm. Um, it's filled with synchronicities, coincidences. It's all coincidence. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, this is very strange. And then, of course, you mentioned... Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson, the sister of Michael Jackson, at the Super Bowl. Now, in my book, Ravaged by the New Age, I have a picture of Michael Jackson as a horned devil, uh, as a hideous being, uh, in a little film. I think it was 10 or 12 minutes long that Disney had him do. He did a film for Disney, Michael Jackson, and it was called uh, Captain EO. And, uh, you know, people go down to Disney World and they, they, one of the rides, I forget which, I think it's the one where they sing the song, you know, it's a, it's a small, small world or yeah. something like that. But to evidently they play this film and the captain, uh, this Captain EO film that the devil, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, you know, portrays. That's all I can call him is a devil. But uh, I went back and I studied mythology a little bit deeper, and I found that Eo is one of the names of Satan, in fact. So here we have then Disney having this movie, Captain Satan, you might call it, with Michael Jackson, and then suddenly here comes uh, Janet Jackson with one of the Mouseketeers, former Mouseketeers, Justin Timberlake, uh, helping her to perform a little uh, malfunction of her wardrobe to show off her uh, sun goddess breast uh, imagery. Yeah, I, I think the coincidences just keep getting, the synchronicities uh, keep getting more and more. Uh, it's all it's almost like an incredible drama uh, going on here. Now let me let me ask some questions here. First of all, 
go down to the the base base of this. Now, obviously, the question is, why would the Illuminati, the elite, why would they choose young, beautiful women? Marilyn Monroe, a Jane Mansfield, a Princess Diana, a Madonna, a Britney Spears, Anna Nicole Smith. I guess sex is first of all the. Do they pass them around to men? Uh, w- what is going on? Uh, let me just start by saying that the original incarnation of this very trouble that we witness in Hollywood day after day, and now Hollywood is the druid uh, symbol of death and resurrection uh, in the land of Californication. Uh, what we are looking at is, is very much what is described in the Book of Enoch as, as the fallen angels, as uh, Shemyaza came down and forced his, his uh, lust onto the women of men. Or, and uh, as we see the, the equation, we see that this very thing is going on. Uh, Semyaza, Azrael, and all of these other fallen angels were to teach sorcery to women, to make them into sex slaves, to teach them pharmacia, and, all, and, and teach men war. And if we look at the Freemasons and the, the troubles of the world today, they are all pinned right into that very equation of the, the fallen angels. You know, that is interesting. That Genesis 6, there that they, they, they these fallen angels took whomever they wanted to be their wives of the beautiful women. Uh, it made them their, 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 their sex partners and so forth. And the children, the progeny that came forth were yes, known as mighty men because perhaps they were satanic and were able to practice magic. But the Bible says that God saw this as an abomination so much so that he determined he would destroy the known world with a flood. Yeah. And and I think so. So it as some people out there might say this is getting way off the deep end. Uh, Freeman and Tex are talking about demons having relations, sexual relations with women. But there we do have, and even to the extent that they had strange, uh, bizarre children, uh, some some kind of a mixed blood. You know, it says that Noah, however, was perfect in his generation. And that word there means in his race. He was ev- evidently was one of the few whose blood was not polluted by this. These actually may be demon children these people are spawning. Yes, and the moon child of, of Aleister Crowley does fit uh, into this whole thing as we get to the Anna Nicole story. We'll get deeper into that. The, when, I, when I have... Br- Britney Spears staring at me out from the cover of People magazine. My heart breaks. I, I can't look at her and, and, and not feel deep sorrow because these children did not choose this. Mm. Uh, they have been abused and ritually used over and over again to the point that they have no control over their lives whatsoever. They cannot be held to blame. These, these people are victims. I see what you mean. I feel so much for for Brittany, and I feel so much for poor little Daniel Lynn, uh, because this is not their choice. You you know, I tell you, we're going to have to take a break. When we come back, let's start up with that again and get deeper into this. You you know, even the judge there in Florida uh, cried. I I assume he was truthfully uh, doing so cried and begged them, please, please, let's consider the little child. You know, as if he could foresee a terrible future for this Daniel Lynn uh, Smith. Well, my guest today is Freeman, and uh, he is a a TV producer, a researcher uh, in the occult, uh, meaning that he wants to expose these things so that the truth will come forth. I'm Tex Mars. Stay with us. We've got a lot more when I return right here on Power of Prophecy. Hello, friends. Tex Mars again. I'm so glad you're with us today. We're looking into the sordid drama of the mind-controlled beauty queens. The whole world is indeed 
formed as a grand drama or occult ritual. And there are many Illuminati secret signs and symbols, even architecture. Well, Friedman and I teamed up to expose this, and we have a video called Codex Magica, the Freeman Perspective. The Freeman Perspective. And we'll be glad to give you a copy of that video. It's $25. It's two, uh, two hours in length, approximately two solid hours. And I'll tell you, Freeman and I go so fast and furious in this video. I think we got three or four hours of material in it, but, but it's two hours long. Uh, incredible information and photographs. And by the way, we didn't really have a script or anything else. We just, I mean, but we talked about some things and I think you will uh, receive a blessing. You know, it's always a blessing to know the truth. No matter how sordid and lurid, it's better to know the truth. Then you can prepare yourself. You can prepare your loved ones. You'll know what's ahead in the world. You won't be caught unawares by evildoers. So you need the video, Codex Magica, The Freeman Perspective. Now it's $25. It's only in DVD format. I wish we had VHS, but right now we only have DVD format. Um, I suppose you could get the DVD and take it down to uh, some of the places, uh, local places in your area. They can make a VHS copy for you. Uh, or you could have a friend that uh, can do that, has the capability. But we have it only in DVD. Now, we would ask you to also send with the $25, $4 for shipping and handling. A total of $29 for the DVD documentary, Codex Magica, The Freeman Perspective. Our phone number is toll-free to order, is toll-free, 1-800-234-9673, 1-800-234-9673. Our address, you can send a $29 uh, check, money order, or cash if you can seal it uh, very well, so the postman can't look at it and say, wow, I think I've just made $29. Uh, send that to Power of Prophecy, 1708 Patterson Road, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. And as always, when you order something, anything at all, you can even order the tape of today's program, the audio tape or CD for $8 uh, of today's program. Uh, we will put you on our mailing list and you'll receive at least six months, maybe longer, a free subscription to my newsletter, Power of Prophecy. Now, freemantv.com, I think you'll uh, enjoy that. Uh, Freeman has done a number of things. He's got, uh, I think, a video on, he mentioned corporate logos, uh, and uh, that that's a real eye-opener. And uh, you'll also have this uh, uh, news article that he's got, Anna Nicole, Brittany, and Mind Control. And it's a tremendous uh, article. Uh, he tells me he's working on a book. It's a big, big project, but I do hope Freeman will be able to finish that book because uh, you know, Anna Nicole Smith is not going to be the last victim of this uh, horrible uh, mind control conspiracy. And so we really need to bone up on this subject. Now let's return to our program today. My guest is Freeman. That's all he calls himself. Freeman, F-R-E-E-M-A-N, all one word. Uh, Freeman, welcome back to Power of Prophecy. You know, Marilyn Monroe, we, we, we know now she was murdered. Jane Mansfield, was there was an accident. They say her head was cut off in a car accident. Princess Diana... I, I'm going to have to ask you your opinion. I believe she was also assassinated. Uh, Anna Nicole Smith, here is a, a very tragic case. Tell us, tell us what you believe based on your research on this monarch, monarch mind control program. Who was really Anna Nicole Smith? What happened to her? And what are they doing now about fighting over this baby and this billion-dollar inheritance, who is really behind this? Well, you know, we have very few 
few sources for our understanding of this trauma-based mind control. And Fritz Springmeier is, is number one on the, on the list of informants, giving us some understanding of, of what's going on. A uh, number of, of the mind control slaves have come out, uh, including uh, uh, Kathy O'Brien and perhaps Arizona Wilder. Uh, these, uh, so we, we, we have the clues before us to, to attach to what we're looking at. Now, Anna Nicole has just joined an exclusive sorority of playmates that have died before they were 50. Uh, automobile, automobile accidents, drug overdoses, homicides have all played into the, the Playboy Playmates. Uh, if you know about Anna Nicole, you know that her desire uh, publicly was to be like Marilyn Monroe. Hmm. She even looked very much like Marilyn Monroe. Uh, her uh, mother wanted to bury her next to Marilyn Monroe. And that came up quite often in the court case. Uh what we are looking at here is is a classic case of this ritual mind control and even ritual sacrifice. Because uh, typically what we will see happen in, in this type of scenario is that the firstborn child will be, will be sacrificed. And, uh, of course, Daniel, her 20-year-old son, died right in front of her and Howard K. Stern in the Bahama hospital when he showed up to visit Anna after giving birth to Daniel Lynn. Uh, now, the guy who did the autopsy on Daniel is the same man who did the autopsy on uh, Jean Benet. Mm. And Arizona Wilder does equate Jean Benet's name with the, the brotherhood's name for the devil, Jean Bet. Uh, Cyril White, the, the autopsy, uh, the man who gave the autopsy, uh, has been uh, a, charged with many uh, uh, accounts of selling cadavers, uh, 84 account indictment of trading unclaimed cadavers for lab space uh, for his private practice. So just to give you an idea of who's involved in some of this. Um, now, it's said that uh, Anna Nicole was so distraught about this whole event of the death of her son that she has lost all memory of the event. But if we're looking at this from a mind control aspect and trying to, to sort it out in this fashion, because this is absolutely what it appears to be, we find that Anna Nicole uh, says that her mother sexually and physically abused her, which is right along the, the, the case. Uh, her mother is a police officer, which we often find is the case with these Satanists. Uh, lawyers, doctors, they are uh, the highest levels of our system of, of civilization. Uh, these are not strange lone nutters. These are people that are high up uh, in the world. So so her mother, that's right, I think for 28 years she was on the police force, uh, the sheriff's department, as a deputy in this little Texas town of Mejia. Uh, wow, that's, uh, yeah, and, and evidently Anna Nicole Smith said herself that she was basically tortured, beaten, raped as a child yes this is that trauma uh, that you were talking about that that causes uh th these people to become mind controlled sex slaves now her mother kept saying that they were uh, she was on drugs that uh, she was running with the wrong crowd and that you know she tried to to help her and warn her about this uh, but the autopsy shows that she did not have drugs in her system, that there were no uh, drugs in her stomach upon autopsy. Uh, so what is to explain this videotape that strangely came out in the, in the court case? And I think this is something that really needs to be highlighted, because this is very bizarre. As we are watching the court case of Anna Nicole as these, uh, well, what can we call them, vultures, uh, fight over her remains, uh, you know, there were 18 lawyers and three uh, claimants to this whole case, and the the court case was was very bizarre. And let, let's just say that uh, Judge uh, uh, Ledlin was uh, is actually shooting for his own own spot in Hollywood as well. He wants to get his own Judge Judy show. So uh, the the strange case was was truly bizarre. But what 
what we watched as we were seeing in this case uh, was a man that was called forth by what the judge called Houston, uh, because he used nicknames for all of the lawyers. Uh, Houston brought in a, a Mr. Ford Shelley. Now, Mr. Ford Shelley claimed to be the man who uh, picked out the house for Anna Nicole in the Bahamas, loaned her the money to pay for it, and he also states that they never did pay for the house and that it is still his. But, of course, it was shown that it wasn't his house. It was actually his, father, uh, his father-in-law's house, uh, Mr. G. Ben Shelley. So, uh, so she really didn't even own the house, so no. now they can do with the house whatever they want. They're talking about and kicking Howard K. Stern out and, and taking uh, Anna, or Daniel Lynn into uh, Bohemian or Bahama custody as a ward of the state. Uh, but that hasn't been uh, discussed. There was one little mention on the news. But yes, he definitely stated that uh, he still had the claim to the house and that they did not pay for the house. Uh, what's interesting is that this man, Fort Shelley, broke into the house and there were police reports and everything to confirm this. Howard K. Stern was there when this all went down. Uh, he broke into the house, Mr. Shelley did, and he jokes that he broke into his own house. And he stole Anna Nicole Smith's computer, which he says that she gave him the password for, and he stole a number of videotapes. And they had brought a videotape along to the courtroom. And as much as I consider this in... Uh, I cannot figure out why they would have brought this into this courtroom and why what it has to do with who gets Anna's body. Because what the tape showed was a classic case of dissociative identity disorder. We are not looking at a woman on drugs. We are looking at a woman who has reverted to her first altar where she is a four-year-old girl. You can, you can listen and watch the tape and see that this is true for yourself. Uh, what we see now, they brought the tape in. Uh, Ford Shelley was a, a, a person on the side of the mother, so therefore he was supposedly uh, there to have the, the bodies moved to Texas, to Houston. Uh, but this is not what he said. He said that he thought that, the, that Anna should stay with her child in Bahamas. Uh, there are many curious twists in this whole story of how she ended up in the Bahamas. Uh, what the tape showed was Anna Nicole painted up in a clown makeup, which was very uh, demented, very distorted clown makeup. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of John Wayne Gacy. Yes. The serial murder. They painted her face up in three or four different uh, sections of color. And, and, and you know, you're right. She, she just looked. She had a blank stare on her face. She was not woozy or drunk uh, or high. Uh, so much, and it was like almost, who am I? Where am I? What's going on? You could see that she did not know. Uh, now, B.J. Bernstein, the legal analyst on CNN, said she had a very childlike, haunting voice. And when you listen to her, you will hear a four-year-old girl speaking. If you close your eyes, you wouldn't know it wasn't a four-year-old girl. When uh, Howard K. Stern, who was making the film, uh looks at her and he says, Anna, Anna, listen to me, because you need to, to catch the, uh, the mind control person's attention. Uh, when, when he asks her, he says that Riley thinks you've lost your mind, and she says as a four-year-old girl, I didn't lose my mind, and he says, well, she thinks you have, and she says, I didn't, and then uh, Howard K. Stern starts to ask her, is this a mushroom trip? And, and Anna Nicole is going, what do you mean? And he says, is this a mushroom trip? And he, she says, huh, I don't understand. And he says then, I'm kidding. And she again says, what does that mean? I'm kidding. Okay, she had no clue as to what he was talking about. Her four-year-old altar had never been introduced to mushroom trips or anything of that nature. Now, if you want to take this one step further, when Howard K. Stern says to her, this footage is worth money. She says, why? What footage? Because she has no idea what he's referring to. Because once again, we're looking at the mind of a four-year-old. Mm. So he says, this thing you're looking into. And he's speaking about the camera. And so the four-year-old girl says, that's a camera. And he says, exactly. Wow. 
As we're looking at this, you can see that this is not a woman that is on drugs. She has been in front of cameras all her life. She knows exactly what footage is. But when we're, we're, we're looking at this from a mind control aspect, we can easily recognize that this is an altar we are witnessing. Mm. You know, I remember in the case of Marilyn Monroe, do you remember that famous birthday party for John F. Kennedy? And uh, she was invited, of all things, to come, uh, which should have been a disgrace. And she was wearing like a white uh, dress, very tight, like a wedding dress of sorts. Mm -hmm. But they announced her and put the spotlight on the stage, but she didn't come out. And they announced three times, you know, and now Marilyn Monroe, and she didn't come out. After they announced her three times, finally she came out, and then upon her finally showing up, in other words, exactly three times, and you know the significance in a Masonic uh, ritual, they have many things that come in multiples of three, but the spotlight shone on her three times, and then finally she did come out, and the announcer says, the late Marilyn Monroe, the late Marilyn Monroe, as if she were already dead. And, of course, shortly thereafter, she was indeed uh, found dead. And as Peter Lawford uh, reportedly told his wife when he came back from helping them clean up her house uh, in preparation for the police so they would not know she would have been murdered, Peter Lawford, the actor, told his wife, quote, I think Marilyn just had her last enema. I think Marilyn just had her last enema. And uh, evidently, uh, many experts now believe she was given an enema uh, with, uh, you, you know, pills to kill her. Uh, and that's how they introduced in her body. And she didn't have any needles and things like that, uh, markings um, on her body. So uh, amazing things here. Uh, Princess Diana... From what I read, and maybe it was in your article, uh, Freeman, three days, now if we get back to three, three days before her death, her assassination, she laid out her funeral clothing, a black dress. She laid it out on her bed. And sure enough, the three days before, and there she, she, she told her friends, they're going to kill me. It's going to be an automobile accident. Looked like an automobile accident, she said. And she told Jane Pauley, remember that? On a, a international TV, when she was interviewed before her death, she said, from, the, from even before I married Prince Charles, I always felt like a lamb being prepared for slaughter. Yeah. So it, it, she, she apparently at one level or another knew now, I have a question for you. Do you think, you know, you mentioned how your heart was just broke looking at uh, Britney Spears. Uh, and now we have Anna Nicole Smith, another tragic character, Marilyn Monroe. Do you think these women tried to escape this mind control programming? Is that what went on with uh, Anna and now with uh, with Britney Spears? Is that is that what's going on? Well, it is very curious that uh, Arizona Wilder reported through David Icke that when she was breaking up the Mothers of Darkness, which is a uh, high occult group in Belgium, uh, it's where we get our, our Freemason term, a thousand points of light. Uh, this is when she tried to break free of their, their programming and did break free. The first thing she did was go out and dye her hair brown because they want their, their sex slaves, their high priestess rituals, ritual prostitutes to be of a pure blonde hair without ever cutting it. And I noticed that right before uh, Brittany was to go and shave her head, the first thing she did was go dye her hair brown hmm. and then shave it all off. And according to Fritz Springmeier and a number of others that are into uh, uh, understanding this, uh, they do break their programming at 30. Uh, typically, and what we find is that Brittany is now uh, reaching, she will turn 26 this year. Uh, I think they are aware, uh, but at, 
once you're in it, there's no escape. And mm. so the, she doesn't know what to do. She certainly can't turn to anyone and and try and explain this to them. Uh, now, the curious thing is, as we're looking in Fritz Bringmeier's list, of, of course, Marilyn Monroe, James Manfield, as, as presidential model mind control slaves. Well, another one that is listed on that is Zsa Zsa Gabor. Now, this is a very curious note in the Anna Nicole story, because of the four claimants for the fathering Daniel Lynn, uh, one of them is Prince Frederick von Anhal, who is none other than Zsa Zsa Gabor's husband. Now, he says, if you go back from September, she wasn't with Larry Burkhart or uh, Howard K. Stern. She was with me. Now, this is a 59-year-old man that you... And uh, this was an Associated Press interview. He says, that child is mine. Well, Russian historical archives confirm that Prince Frederick was born Robert Lichtenberg in 1943 in Berlin, but not of the German royal house, but as a result of experiments conducted by Nazi scientist German Dr. Karl Klauberg to bring about a direct bloodline of the Austrian Schickelgrubers. Now, if you know, and I know you do, the Schickelgrubers are none other than Hitler. Hmm. If we're looking at this picture down to the very end, Daniel Lynn, this poor girl that is now in the hands of Howard K. Stern, who was present at the death of the boy and present at the death of, of Anna Nicole, uh, is, is holding with him a child that very well could be a direct descendant of Hitler through a Nazi genetic experiment. That's that's what <laughs> it gets more and uh, and more weird, uh, and and yet you know going back back now to the Jewish Kabbalah, uh, the system of magic that all of these uh, women seem to be, uh, uh, you know, mixed up with in, at one level or another. Uh, we know that uh, now the hidden history of World War Two and pre World War Two was that Hitler worked very close with the Zionist uh and had plans uh, uh you know to 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 help set up uh the nation of Israel and it may very well be that the concentration camps were based on the agreement that Hitler had with the leading Zionist Jews uh so that uh, after World War II was over finally uh the world would be so uh, sympathetic to the plight of the, the Jews, that uh, they would uh, allow a Zionist nation, uh, Israel, to be formed. And now we find, uh, you know, uh, Hitler may well be part of this uh, Illuminati setup through the through the ages. And then that would make sense. And suddenly, now we know why some, uh, some uh, unknown uh, painter, uh, a corporal, an enlisted man uh, in the... Uh, you know, in Germany, that was unheard of. You know, Germany is a very strict, uh, you know, they still call the doctors Mr. Doctor, you know, air doctor. Uh, so there, our air colonel, uh, the, the, the society is so rigid, uh, it's very strange that they would allow a, a, a guy who had only been a colonel. You know, he took over from, uh, was it general, I forget the general's name, um, but, uh, boy, uh, just amazing, amazing things here. Uh, we all thought it was just tabloid. Yeah, now back to this Kabbalah, the Jewish system of magic. Now, now Marilyn Monroe converted to Judaism and would necessarily probably have studied the Kabbalah, uh, you know, so she was trying to become a Jew. That would show that somehow or another... Much, much of this magical programming has to be related to the Kabbalah. And then Madonna, of course, changed her name to Esther, and she's a big advocate of the Jewish Kabbalah. Uh, Britney Spears also has studied the Kabbalah. She wears the Jewish Star of David around her neck. Uh, I, I wonder if this, again, is another uh, a clue for us. Uh, Hitler also was very much into the Theosophical Society of, of Madame Blavatsky. Uh, and if we look into the very words of Aleister Crowley, who is known as the Beast, and he is uh, definitely the one who is supplying.
supplying most of this information to the public, and we find that Aleister Crowley is rampant through our music industry with uh, Led Zeppelin and a number of other groups uh, that just goes on and on, the Beatles, uh, the Rolling Stones, Aleister Crowley is behind all of this. And it was Aleister Crowley that said, but the bloody sacrifice, though more dangerous, is more efficacious, and for nearly all purposes, human sacrifice is best. For the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force. A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable victim for bloody sacrifice. Hmm. From the words of the beast. Yeah. Now, now, this back to the Jewish Kabbalah, very big in occult numerology. Now, Marilyn died in, on an occultly appropriate number was well, she was age 36 yes. i think that's in your article you talk about the age now anna nicole smith evidently died at age 39 uh, i was told is that correct uh, yes and both 36 and 39 are very big in the masonic uh, lore uh as numbers as well as the kabbalah so you wonder I'll tell you, if I were somebody like, and then Princess Diana also died at age 36. Yes. Wow. Now, and then we is... also have our 27 club of all the rock and roll stars that have, have tried, and you will find them all connected. Uh... The 27 club. And, of course, that would mean uh, 2 plus 7 equals 9, 9, the number of the beast, because 6, 6, 6, uh, those three digits added together, comes to uh, 18, 1 plus 8 equals 9. So 27 really is the concealed number of the beast. Uh, 36 also, three sixes, the number of the beast. Boy, this is just, uh, just, just incredible. Here again, we have the evidence that the world is much stranger than we could, uh, we could ever imagine, isn't it? Absolutely. It, it is. You know, Tex, if, if I didn't know that God had placed me here to, to talk about all of this and has led me to this knowledge, I would be frightened. But because I have this faith in my heart and the trust, I know that I can I can speak out to these people, to all of you listening now, and say these things and try to show you. Uh, if I had no faith and no trust, I would be a, a very frightened young man. I'm glad. You know, we're running out of time. I'm glad you ended with that. Because the Bible says we are to have no fear of the adversary. You, you know, I love the, in the book of James... Uh, because it says, uh, rather than fear the devil, it said it says, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So it's a three-step process there. You submit yourself to God. Second, you then will have the power to resist the devil and third, he cannot possibly stand up to that great power of God. Hey, Freeman, I want to thank you so much for being our guest today on this program. We've been thank talking you. about sordid drama of the mind-controlled beauty queens. And you're going to let us know now when you finish that book someday, right? Oh, you better believe it. Okay, and we want to have you on again very, very soon. Stay with us, uh, Freeman. I'm going to say goodbye to the folks. I'll tell you, friends out there, these are trying times. The Bible talked about perilous times in the last days and there is only one hope and his name is Christ Jesus this is Tex Mars I pray that you'll tune in each week during the same time tune in and discover the power of prophecy in this incredible global stage production that the Illuminati is now presenting to the world. Let's just put it that way. Maybe there's some who their, their very lives are being played out in the newspapers, in celebrity magazines, on TV and so forth. They are, they are fashion queens, beauty queens. The pretty people, so to speak, but how pretty can they be when we realize the horror 
of what seems to be occurring to them. Today I would like to propose that you and I as friends discuss the subject of the sordid drama of the mind-controlled beauty queens. The broken lives and deaths of, yes, Anna Nicole Smith, but there's more. There's Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield and Princess Diana and Grace Kelly. And then there are those who are still alive, or are they? Maybe only in form, but it seems their souls are already dead. Madonna. And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Well, friends, just when you think the world is going nuts, well, (laughs) along comes a lot of evidence to prove your case. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Today we're going to be talking about something that sounds insane. It's it's right off the the our TV screens, off of the uh, news magazines and so forth. But but I wonder it might well be, and my guest today is going to be talking about this very subject. It could be that the world is being driven insane. M- maybe. What's going on all around us is a stage drama, a, a ritual of sorts. And maybe there are already certain individuals, certain people who've already been chosen to play a certain kind of role. I believe it's a Freeman TV.com. Freeman, like Freeman TV.com. Freeman and I, uh, he was, uh, Good enough to invite me on his TV program here on Austin Cable Access some months ago. And we did an entire program. I think it's about two hours long, in fact, on my book, Codex Magica. But Freeman, because he is a a great researcher in that same area, had a number of pictures and slides that really added to the production. And we'll tell you a little later on how to get that. Freeman, welcome to Power of Prophecy. You know, a lot of people just believe what they see on the news. Everything they see about Anna Nicole Smith is like a strange drama being played out, but they don't realize maybe there's something here to the lives of of a Marilyn Monroe and a Britney Spears. Tell us, what, what do you think is going on? Because every time you turn around, Christina Aguilara uh, and uh, Britney Spears are... Uh, Paris Hilton, they, they've done something more outrageous. And then we have Miss USA, Tara Connor. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on, the outrageous behavior, but something seems to be askew. What's, what do you think is going on? There is a deeper and darker truth to this whole story that is uh, conveniently being left out of the picture. Uh, when we start to look at this image and we start to recognize the players in it, we see the interlinking connections between it all. And these are Disney, Freemasonry, and Kabbalism. And these three things will go throughout this entire story that we're about to give. Disney, Freemasonry, and Jewish Kabbalism. Yes. Wow. Okay. As if we start to recognize, and as my, my film... Uh, corporate logos has shown that this is a worldwide uh, ritual being performed, as we saw in the Y2K ritual, the, just to, to establish that this is a worldwide event, uh, that what we are looking at here is ritualism. And this is the big part that is being missed by most of the public because, well, we're not very uh, well informed on the subject of, of ritual and the occult. But as we look and we see that uh, the, the latest big Grammy winners are all ex mouseketeers and that each of the others, including Madonna and Prince, have also been involved with Walt Disney, uh, Madonna making the movie of the 
Britney Spears, and many others. I want to ask the question, are these young women alive and dead? Are they nothing more than Illuminati sex slaves? Has something horrible happened to these young beauty queens? And what is going on all about us? Have as my guest, because uh, I'll tell you, he's a man that I know can uh, give us some answers. You know, you've already seen the news. You've, you've watched CNN and Fox TV and ABC. You know about Anna Nicole Smith. You know, just ad in infinitum. It, it, it's just sick. I don't even want to hear anymore about Anna Nicole Smith and all those things that are going on about her very perverse, disgusting, and vulgar life. And yet there may be a riddle, a a mystery, an enigma deeper than the news uh, uh, organs can possibly uh, uh, cover it. Freeman is my guest today. You know, he had a TV program. I understand he's put it on hiatus. He's resting a while. I can understand that. You just get exhausted. He's resting a while, but he still has his Internet website. And I read a tremendous article on his website, and uh, we'll tell you that, uh, I believe.